If you want to keep marine macroalgae, but you don't know how to do it, then this is the video for you because I'm going to be going through everything you need to know to keep marine macroalgae in your aquariums. Macroalgae is salt water, so you're going to need to know already how to keep a salt water aquarium. If you don't, then you need to go ahead and research that before watching this video because I'm not going to be teaching you how to keep a salt water aquarium. I'm going to be teaching you how to keep macroalgae. Macroalgae has become very popular recently. It's definitely one of the sides of the saltwater hobby which is increasing in popularity, which I'm really happy about. I've been trying to bring it to people's attention and make it become more popular as well as lots of other people on Instagram and YouTube as well. So I'm very pleased to see that more people are taking it up in this hobby. I already have lots of videos on macroalgae, lots of in-depth guides on how to keep them, but they all are very separate videos and some people watch one video and then miss the other one and they ask me questions about certain topics which I've already covered. This video is going to be an A to Z guide on macroalgae. It's going to be um, as concise as I can make it, but essentially I will try and cover every single thing that you need to know to keep these lovely species of macroalgae in your aquarium. So let's start with the easy one really and that is what tank do you need to keep marine macroalgae? The answer is, it really does not matter. It is not that important which tank you choose to keep macroalgae. Um, as long as it can hold salt water, it's good enough, essentially. And I'll prove that, really, because on this side of my fish house, I'm using plastic tubs, albeit this is a very new system so it looks a lot dirtier than it will do in the future it's only about a month old so it's still cycling but that's what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter which tank you use the bigger the tank you get the better it will be just like all reef tanks and freshwater tanks the bigger the volume of water that you have in your tanks the more stable and healthy your tanks tend to be but if all you can do is a 30 litre desktop aquarium that will be fine as well. You just have to watch your water quality a bit more than if you had something like this, which is a 250 litre. What substrate do you need to use for keeping macroalgae? You can see in this tank, I've got fine coral sand, and that's generally what a lot of people use in their marine tanks. However, you don't necessarily need a substrate in a marine macroalgae tank, but it has the same benefits that it does in a normal reef tank because it will help to buffer the water, helps to um, stop your pH dropping, keeps the alkalinity up. So it's a good thing to have. It also acts as a biofilter, so you get bacteria and little organisms living in this. So just like a normal reef tank, having a substrate is usually a good idea. Certain species, like Calerpa taxifolia, which is this green one, and also Calerpa prolifera, they like to have a substrate to grow into, although you wouldn't know it with this one because it's on the rock. Calerpa prolifera in particular does like to have a substrate to root into. However, as I said, it's not necessary. Here's a, a tank with no substrate. This one's got some race mosa. It's a bit messy at the moment, um, but over here we've got my sump and here's some other species of uh, macroalgae that don't need a substrate at all. So we've got Botrocladia, we've got red ogo, um, and this is completely happy growing without a substrate. So although I'd recommend it, um, you don't need it. You know, if you like a tank without a substrate, then you can still have a macroalgae. In terms of water quality, it's essentially exactly the same as a normal saltwater tank. The only real difference is I highly um, discourage using any of these salts that are enhanced for coral growth. Although macroalgae do use these things from the water column, stuff like calcium for instance, macroalgae, unless you get a calciferous algae, they don't really use it. So it's best to use your real basic um, salts, the ones that are closest to natural seawater as possible and not use anything that's enhanced. So for instance, I use the aquaforest sea salt, which is basically the most basic um, salt you can get, but it's a really good salt. Macroalgae love it. I've also used the Red Sea um, Salt, the blue bucket, I think, the one that's not enhanced with anything. One thing you have to watch out for with macroalgae is alkalinity and magnesium. These do get used up quite a bit in the process of macroalgae growing. 
they um, they use the magnesium and the alkalinity to sort of grow. It's where they get the carbon uh, and, and things for growing. You have to watch that in particular, or those two things in particular, when you're doing your water tests. And I just buffer that with um, powder buffers to keep those things back up where they should be. Lighting, the biggest confusing part of keeping macroalgae. And it is confusing because it's not one thing fits all for macroalgae. So they have very, very similar needs to freshwater plants. In fact, a lot of their chlorophyll peaks are the same as freshwater plants, but they also have accessory pigments in them, which allows them to get light at different depths in the water because macroalgae do not grow all at the same depth. That's why they are different colors because they are evolved to absorb different wavelengths of light at different depths of water. Um, typically your green ones tend to be shallower than your red ones, although if you ever walked along a beach, you'll see plenty of red macroalgae growing in rock pools. So it's all very confusing. Um, and I'm telling you now that I haven't officially completely nailed which spectrum of light is good for which species of algae. In general though, if you're just looking for a general light, you'll do very well if you get a standard but good quality freshwater plant LED. So something like these lights here, although one of them is a reef light, this is the Fluval, it's a bit salty. This is the Fluval plant light, very, very bright, very, very high quality. Obviously this is quite expensive, over 200 pounds, but there are other versions of different brands that are cheaper. But the important thing is, is that spectrum of this light is around 6,000 K, which is 6,000 Kelvin. That is the light temperature. That is the temperature of light which most macroalgae are happy with. So yes, a lot of people grow macroalgae under reef lights as well. And this is where it gets confusing because reef lights are suitable for most macroalgae as well because the spectrum they give off, they tend to have a 10,000 K um, spectrum in them, which is just about right for some macroalgae, which is why I've been using a combination of um, reef and freshwater because it kind of ticks all the bases um, but some species don't like full-on blue light because it misses out a lot of the spectrum that they've evolved to use. Corals are evolved to use most of that blue light which is why reef lights tend to be heavy on the blues but bearing in mind those lights have been developed to grow corals and they just so happen to be okay for macroalgae as well. They're not designed for macroalgae. And this is why I promote the use of more a freshwater spectrum because those freshwater spectrum lights cover more of the spectrum that the macroalgae is like. So just to go a bit further into that, you might have noticed that I started off showing you T5 lights. And the reason I'm doing this is because T5 lights are messy on the spectrum. I find that T5 lights tend to give out a, a wider range of spectra, whereas LED lights, they've been tuned, they've been, um, every LED is specific to a wavelength, and you've really nailed it down when it comes to corals. They'll, they'll be great for corals because they hit every single thing that you want a coral to get light-wise but they miss out a lot of those spectra that the accessory pigments in the macroalgae need. So if you miss that whole range of spectra out, you're not gonna have as happy a macroalgae as possible. And that's why I use T5s. And the T5s in here, they are a freshwater plant and I've got a marine 50-50. So we've got 6,500K on one bulb and then we've got a 10,000 mix with a I think like a 19,000 K so we've got a blue we've got a high-end white and we've got a sort of freshwater um, full sunlight spectra bulb and because of how sort of messy in terms of the spectra T5s are it tends to cover everything and everything likes living under this mixture of lighting so that's why I'm using T5s on um, my tanks. When I get another T5 unit, I'll be replacing these LEDs with more T5s. Um, this tank is as it is. If you look at my system over here, we've got T5s, just two bulbs, and I find that works the best for macroalgae because it kind of gives you everything in terms of spectra. I find marine 
reef lights too specific, too pinpointed on corals and they neglect a lot of the spectra that um, macroalgae needs and likes. Temperature, very easy question to answer. Um, have it the same temperature as a normal tropical reef aquarium. So in this case, we're at about 24 to 26 degrees. Nothing special about the temperature. Some species can go colder. So if you're gonna keep things like ulva, like this one here, or um, Calerpa prolifera, like that one there, uh, even Cheeto, they can live at around 18 degrees if you want them to. Um, I think Oliver can go even lower than that. You find this in like all over the world. You find it in places like Canada where it's very, very cold. So Oliver's very tolerant. But in general, in a most, most reef tanks, you're going to be at around 24 degrees. So let's talk about flow and filtration of your macaroni tanks. That was good timing. So flow is important. It is important, but it's not as important as corals. As long as you have some water movement, your macroalgae tend to be quite happy. Um, I haven't really found there to be much of a correlation between water movement and poor growth. There is one correlation though, and that is flow will affect how your macroalgae looks. That is an entirely different video, but macroalgae tend to grow differently depending on their environments. This tank here is a very low flow aquarium. I found that a lot of macroalgae actually grow totally fine in low flow. You do not need your flow blasting through like a normal reef tank. You can have it blasting through like a normal reef tank, but what will happen is most of your algae will grow in a certain direction. A lot like when you have a tree in high winds and that tree sort of grows in a bent over sort of shape, that's the sort of thing you'll get with macroalgae. So I'd say a low to medium flow is about right for your macroalgae and then it will tend to grow upright and pretty happy. In terms of filtration, well in the long run, macroalgae is the filtration. But to start with, you're gonna need filtration. I usually run things like this, canister filters or internal filters on my macroalgae tanks. You don't really need a full on um, sump system, you can quite happily grow a macroalgae system with no filtration like the Wallstad method, you could do that with macroalgae but it will take a long time to mature but after a while once the macroalgae starts growing um, a lot of the nasties that build up in a normal reef tank they get sucked in and used by our friend the macroalgae. So just use whatever filter you're comfortable with um, but don't stress out about it, it's okay to just use no filtration or minimal filtration as long as you can support your livestock. I've turned this system off, but this is the next point, and this is um, system maturation. And this is the biggest thing I found out about um, macroalgae, and also I think one of the most common mistakes with keeping macroalgae, and that is putting it into a tank that's not mature yet. You can see how grubby and dirty these tubs are. They're actually better than they were because this system is maturing. And it's been running for about a month now, and look, it's grubby. But that's what a reef tank does anyway. It's what saltwater tanks do anyway. They go grubby, and they take about three months to six months to actually start maturing. And just like a reef tank with corals, you don't really put corals into an immature system. Lots of people though, including myself in the past, and currently, as you can see, put macroalgae into new tanks, even if they're only a couple of weeks old, because they're just plants, aren't they? They're just, you know, macroalgae, they're not corals. But, as you can see, they don't grow very well in immature systems. I don't actually know why they don't do that. Um, even in tanks which don't go dirty like this, certain macroalgae species just hate new systems. They can't grow, they don't thrive. After about four to six months, the same species in that more mature system will grow and will thrive. It's just a thing that they do. Also, in immature systems, they get covered in rubbish. They get covered in detritus, they get covered in algae, um, and it really hinders them. So do not set up a new macroalgae tank or reef tank and put your macroalgae in it straight away because look at how grubby and horrible this is although this codium is actually quite happy because it's got all of its little hairy bits out and that shows me that the, the codium is actually happy um, 
it's not the right environment. Uh, you get lots of problems, you know. Um, so just don't do it, wait for your tank to mature and then you'll have a better success rate. So let's talk fish. What fish can you put into a macroalgae tank? Well, the answer is pretty much anything you want as long as it isn't a herbivore. Now, obviously this guy's a herbivore, but he's a very special type of tank. Most herbivores, if not all herbivores, will eat macroalgae. It's actually part of their diet. So it makes sense to not add them to a tank where you're gonna be adding their main food source because they'll just eat it all. However, there are lots of marine fish which don't eat macroalgae, which you can add. So you can see Anthias, damsels, clownfish, cardinals. Um, there's a few species of butterfly fish, blennies with caution. Some blennies will eat macroalgae. Um, I had a bicolor blenny that absolutely chowed down on Calerpa prolifera. I found algae blennies to be pretty good because they only eat the dusty hair algae stuff. So rule of thumb is if it eats um, greens, if it has that mouth that eats greens, like tangs, a lot of tangs do, then don't add it. Rabbit fish will eat greens, don't add it. Um, anything that eats stuff from the water column that mainly lives off things like mysis and you know plankton and stuff that's floating around, then they're fine to add. One fish I really like to add to marine tanks is mollies. I've got videos on how to um, add mollies, so I won't go into it, but these are a great fish for a macroalgae tank. Can you have corals in a macroalgae tank? Obviously, yes you can, there's corals. So that's, that's that answer then, isn't it, basically? Um, I find that soft corals are better to go alongside macroalgae, but you can equally have hard corals it doesn't really matter. You just have to watch out for the algae overgrowing your corals. As you can see here, the taxifolia is growing through this zoa polyp. Um, I don't mind, but if you've got expensive hard corals, this kind of thing might be an issue. Uh, obviously, it might endanger your life of your corals uh, if they overwhelm and swamp the, the, the coral itself. Algae choice. Now, there's a lot of species. Um, I'm in the UK, so I've got species that make its way into the UK. Lots of people watching, though, however, will be from other parts of the world. So, I mean, some of you might even live in a tropical region where you can just go out into the ocean and get your own algae, which is brilliant. Uh, in America as well, there's other species available than there are in the UK because there's stuff growing out there which you can collect, I guess. But generally, most of them can live together quite happily. There are specific things which you don't really tend to keep in your main display, like Cheeto, you don't really keep Ulva. These two species generally are for your sump, for nu nutrient removal um, rather than display, but you can keep them. I do find that over the period of time though, you can find that one macroalgae can outcompete the others. It's quite common to add loads of different species at the beginning and then over the period of a year or so, you find that one just grows so fast that the other ones start to die because the nutrients get used up. This one's particularly um, prevalent for doing that, Calerpa racemosa. This one can quite easily suck in all the goodness from your water and then make everything else sort of dwindle and perish because there's no nutrients left over for it. So you do have to be mindful. If you add the fast growing species of green algae, it can impact sometimes the slower growing red macroalgae. There are also other species like this octodes and um, blue octodes which can grow over a lot of species. This one is a bit of a pest actually I found, that's why it's in segregation here and if this gets sort of churned up in your system and gets around everywhere it can easily overwhelm every single other species of macroalgae in your aquarium because it's just so good at growing. The tiniest a little bit amount of this stuff in amongst some of the other species and it'll just boom overnight you'll have a colony and it's very hard to get rid of but that being said it's beautiful and blue so we embrace it and finally fertilizers another question I get asked a lot do you need to fertilize macroalgae yes you do just in the same way that you need to fertilize freshwater plants you also need to fertilize um, marine plants essentially one thing you do not use ever though is flourish XL why do I have Flourish XL? Uh, I was using it on a freshwater system. This will kill macroalgae. I know you, some people use it because they think like I'm adding carbon for the macroalgae. However, 
they get it out of the water column, they don't need it added, um, as long as you water change essentially a lot, so water change maybe once every two weeks or so, you'll be, they'll be fine in terms of their carbon needs. Um, don't use Flourish Excel. What you need to use though, as well as using big water changes, so 50% water changes every couple of weeks to replace those micronutrients, is lots of other things. So many people add macroalgae to their tanks initially to remove nutrients from the water. If you've got a, a reef tank and you're trying to get rid of nitrates and phosphates and other things, then they're very good at doing that. However, in the long run, people then wonder why their macroalgae dies when their nitrates and phosphates run out. It's because they have no food left. In a marine macroalgae tank specifically, I'm always adding nutrients and it's quite an array of nutrients, isn't it really? So the biggest ones are um, nitrates and phosphates. So I add this, This is um, I get this off eBay actually as a powder and I add this. So there's your nitrates and your phosphates. I also add a micro mix. So this is one I've had specifically made for me. Um, at some point I will be selling this to people to use. I just haven't got round to it. But this is essentially the same as Cheeto Grow. It's got all your micronutrients in it. It's got a lot of iron in it and that is why it's that colour. But a combination of your macro and your micro, um, including this one. This is a, another one here. So we've got lots of so it's like nitrate, phosphate, potassium. Um, that is something I add weekly. One thing I found with using the ammonium based um, fertilizers is the ammonia can actually burn some Gracilaria species. There are some that don't like it. So that's why I've switched over to this. But on things like Cheeto and stuff, you can still use the ammonium based ones. And I add a lot of this. I add probably twice a week, about 100 ml of each to my 900 litre system, so that's quite a lot. And they get through it as well. You know, when I do my tests, it's pretty much gone by the next time I need to dose. So, very important to keep dosing. What I will do in the long term is actually get an auto doser and have it drip in over the weeks. Um, I have got another more in-depth video on doing dosing fertilizers and things like that, but generally, now you can see what I use, and it's quite a lot of stuff. Another question on fertilizers I get is, can you use freshwater fertilizers in a marine tank? The answer is yes. Um, there's very little difference, if any difference, between the fertilizers that people are selling for salt water than they are for fresh water. Pretty much everything I've used in a marine tank, whether it's just a specific iron fertilizer or if it's a complete fertilizer, they will all work in a marine tank and they will all help your macroalgae. So thank you for watching, I hope this video has been helpful in helping you keep macroalgae. As I've said before in this video, I have done more videos on macroalgae. I'll put the playlist link in the description, so just click on that and then you can choose whichever topic you want to have a look at. If you have liked this video, please remember to like the video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you to my channel sponsors and patrons. Once again, thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.